Okay, let's look at commodities now. So obviously CPI will have a big effect on commodities, whether it's the market, the dollar yields, or just commodities directly, there'll be a huge move. So let's start with copper. Copper for me has been pretty strong, you know, ever since this day here, September 11th. Uh, that's a huge bullish engulfing candle. So normally you have a bit of retracement, but a move higher. <clears throat> I mean, that's just on that particular day. Otherwise, copper has been pretty bearish overall, just sideways, a bit boring, actually. Just a bit weak relative to other commodities, right? Think about oil, uranium, even natural gas as of yesterday. Um, but it's really the metals that have been lagging, specifically copper, gold and silver have been pretty weak. Uh, you even had, was it palladium or platinum that had a massive drop? So yeah, copper's in line with the rest of the metals just being a bit of a sideways down uh, commodity at the moment. Now, if inflation is hotter than expected, you know, dollar up, yields up, market down, copper down, right? I mean, copper goes down with the markets and it goes down when the dollar's up. I think that's what's going to happen. So I think we're going to have a big move down. Normally, you don't take out a bullish engulfing candle so easily, but on news like this, this is probably the biggest news event at the moment. CPI bigger than the others, in my opinion. So yeah, you could have a move right below 3.7. You could have easily a close below 3.7. Some follow through that takes you down here to the low 3.6 area, the low of this candle here. And yeah, obviously this is the absolute line in the sand 3.5. I don't think we'll be touching that today, but we could close below 3.7 if it's bearish, which kind of guarantees a move lower. So let's see if 3.6 gets visit, visited. And if the market keeps going down and, and the dollar keeps going up, you know, a few days later, then yeah, 3.5. You don't really want to close below this 3.55 zone because that should indicate a move lower here. But in my opinion, copper wouldn't do that so easily. Now, if there's a surprise, in my opinion, what would be a surprise? Inflation being lower than, than expected or the market translates it as low. Then you have to move up. And let's see if we can close. Well, I would really say above 3.9, that'd be great, but just 3.87 should do it. If you can close above 3.87 here, then you should be able to have some follow through to test for four the next few days. Natural gas, now this doesn't care about inflation, doesn't care about the dollar, doesn't care about interest rates, the markets, it's its own thing. And it's quite refreshing to have a commodity that doesn't care about all these other influences. It's just quite simply supply and demand. I think there's some Australian strikes or I forgot where it was, but... This is beautiful. Finally, natural gas is starting to do what I wanted to do. But every time it does this, it comes all the way back down, and retraces more than it should. And then it teases on the way. Every breakout, it just retraces. It's quite funny. But look, yesterday, big squeeze late in the day, um, closed above this descending. For me, that's very zoomed in tactical bullish stuff. It should guarantee a move up to 2.9. Actually, it did it. It did it on that same day. But closed below 2.9. Okay, that's cute. But at least it closed above the descending, so that should can that should guarantee some follow through. What we want today, and I don't know, maybe CPI interrupts it because although it doesn't care about the market, the market will be so volatile that people's trading. You know, oh my god, uh, I'm getting crushed in one position. Let me just liquidate my natural gas. Sometimes that's the only thing I think that can that can affect natural gas when there's crazy volatility elsewhere that it affects other people's positions just because they need the money or. But I don't think it's going to be too dramatic. Uh, we, we're used to CPI moves also. So I think natural gas will move up here, which is starting to do. Let's see if we can close above 2.9. If we can close above 2.9, we should run to the absolute high of 3.05. And um, and then it's really on. Triple top breakout. Triple tops always follow through. So I'd be very, very bullish if we start to move towards 3.05. I don't think it'll do in one day, but... Well, maybe today. I don't know. It touches it, but a close above 3.05, then we run to four. So natural gas, very, very bullish. Very, very happy. But I'm used to this. I'm used to being disappointed too. So, okay, oil, very nice stuff. Still getting that follow through. Uh, I've said 92 should be in the cards if we can do it quickly. And it looks like that's what we want to do. So we're going to have to refer to CPI again now. So if the inflation is higher than expected, well, oil contributes to inflation, so it's like chicken and egg, but it should move the markets down because interest rates are going to go up, dollar goes up. So if inflation is hot, oil should come down. But recently, it hasn't really been coming down with, despite the dollar going up, 
doesn't really care. So that's how strong oil is. And doesn't really care about the markets. The markets have been coming down too. So oil is starting to disconnect a little bit to its sensitive connection to the markets and the dollar. And I'm wondering if it's going to care much about CPI, if it's hotter than expected. Does that mean, oh, everything down, oil down? Well, probably. But um, I don't know. Actually, I'm interested to see how oil reacts to, to CPI because it shouldn't really be that relevant, to be honest. It's, I mean, remember, it's a bit like gold, which I'll visit soon, you know. Oh, inflation is hotter than expected. Gold should go down. Well, no, gold should be up to reflect inflation. So this is you got to think the way the market thinks, even though it's illogical sometimes. It's pretty, it's like headache material. But anyway, oil on the upside, if it does squeeze up, if it does squeeze up, which it obviously could, you know, regardless of what the news is, if you're trying to wonder, well, just look what happens immediately, one second after in the market, even though there's this typical seesaw, um, you know, just see what the end result is. If it goes up, resistance for me is 92 to 94. You know, you've got this descending and you've got the horizontal, very clear stuff. Very simple lines, only two. Okay, uh, if it moves down, well, I would say this 85 zone because that's prior resistance and it's acted as support a little bit here. So, but if there's a big move down or inflation is really hot, um, then ultimately not in one day, but we're going to go visit the 79 zone, I think, because, because oil's just been bought, overbought so much. <laughs> That if it decides, okay, now is the time to retrace heavy, you might as well go all the way back down to 79. So for me, 92 to 94, 85, and then 79. Those are the levels I'm watching. But a bias to the upside still. It's bullish, and I still think inflation will come in hotter. But I just don't think it will have the effect that people expect on oil this time. I don't know. I'm expecting to be surprised on oil. But so far, very bullish, going all the way up to 92 to 94. 92, I think, is where it will stall. Okay, uranium, oh God, just super bullish. Um, even though it was red, unchanged yesterday, you've got to imagine, you know, the markets were red, NASDAQ was down 1%. So normally it follows the markets, but it's still bullish. I mean, this is just totally bullish, short-term, medium-term, long-term, bullish. Um, despite the dollar being up, despite the markets going down, generally just keeps going. Fundamentally, the story is bullish. It's, it's probably the best commodity at the moment, really. It's um, storming up. However, inflation comes in hot, dollar goes up, yields go up, markets go down. Sorry, but uranium, you're going to have to have a down day. We're just going to have to have that down day. And if we start to close below 24, it should come all the way back down to low 23s. I think actually maybe even 23, just dipping below, just to have that little, you know, all these people chasing the highs, even though it's still a worthwhile trade because it's going to go up long term, just, you know, screw with their heads a little bit. So come all the way back down to 23-ish. So if we close below 24, then you could have some follow through. But again, I think the market needs to drop heavy for that. Now, if uranium goes up <laughs> for whatever reason, like inflation is lower than expected or the dollar drops or whatever the reason is actually, um, well, I mean, that's just continuing the trend. It'll just squeeze towards, honestly, 27.5. I think 27.5 to 28.5. That's the next real resistance level all the way up here. So it won't do it in one day. It'll probably stop off at some round numbers, but just up it goes. Um, yeah, all right. That'll do for the uh, commodities not related to gold and silver.